In this section, we will look into the different types of keyframes. Now we have a composition over here and I need to create a shape. Let's create a square holding shift and draw a square. And I need to move the anchor point to the center of the layer. So what I need to do is I hover to the shape layer, right click, go to transform and move the anchor point to the center. Other than using this way, what we can do is I can always go to the pen behind tool or we call it anchor point tool. Once I click this, I can move around my anchor point in the shapes. And if let's say I want to make sure that I move exactly to the center of the shapes, I can turn on the snapping tool. And when you see that it snapped to the points, you will be able to see that there's a box within the anchor point icons. If let's say you don't have the snapping turned on, you can hold down your control or command in Mac, you will still get the snapping effect as well. So let's get back into the selection tool. Close the content since we are going to animate the shapes layer. We open up the transform. And if you take a look at here, the anchor point is the anchor point of here. Normally we will move it by using pen behind too. And position is for you to move the position of the shape. The front one is X, the back is Y. So X meaning that when I left click and hold on it, I can drag to the left and drag to the right to go to the right and drag to the left to go up and drag to the right to go down at the second column here, which is the Y axis. A uh, skill, right now we have constrained the proportion, which means when we scale it, basically it scale with the same shapes. If let's say we uncheck the link, we, will, we can scale the X axis and Y axis independently. Rotation, at the back here is the degree of it, but when it hits up to 360, it will automatically turn into 1x, meaning that 1 cycle and 6 degree. Opacity, right now I am in 100% opaque. If let's say I go to 0%, meaning that it turns into transparent. We have moved a lot of things here. I can press my reset to reset everything to the center. And right now I need to move my anchor point again to the center. I can just right click, transform, go to center anchor point in layer content. So now let's take a look at the keyframes. There is nothing keyed and we see the stopwatch are all in white color. I can keyframe the stopwatch and make sure that it turns into blue color. And when I drag my timeline indicator to one second, I can move my shape to the new position. And right now, another keyframe is automatically generated and is in highlighted in blue color. If let's say I go to two seconds and I drag it to here, you will see that another keyframes are created and I drag another one to the bottom. So when I press space bar, I can see my animation. It's either I press my space bar or sometimes you can Click play at the preview here. So it will continuous play your animation. If you don't have this preview, you can always go to Windows and open it. So right now, let's take a look at the keyframes. I can keyframe the skill as well and mix makes it like 10%. And I can hold down my shift so that it will snap onto my keyframe, follow my position keyframe. So 100. So right now I have this keyframe. And if you take a look at here, there is this icon over here. So when I hit this keyframe, you will see that it is in blue color, meaning that my timeline indicator is actually falling onto one of the keyframe. If I press left arrow, you will go to the left keyframe. If I go press right arrow, it will go to the keyframe over here and when I am at the end both keyframes are in blue and this is actually constrained because there's no more keyframes at the back so I can always move my keyframe in this way or at this point so it depends whether you want to play around 
sometimes when you want to make sure that you are falling at what the correct keyframe to make a move. If let's say I do it like this, the keyframe is too close to each other, you might get a problem because the frame might jump. So if let's say you want to change the information or the position, you can always click to the right and make your move. There is a shortcut key as well. You can click J to go to the previous keyframe or K to the back keyframe. Right now I'm pressing J to go to the previous keyframe. So this is about the shortcut and how you snap to the previous and next keyframe. Right now we are having all these diamond shaped keyframes which means we are right now in constant speed. So if you take a look from point A to B, there are dots meaning that in every each frame, if let's say we want to go from frame to frame, we hold down control and press the arrow pointing to the right to the next keyframe. So if you take a look at this, every each point represent the frames. So if you take a look at the distance of each point, it is constant. And same with from point B to point C, you see every distance are the same. So this one, we call it constant speed from A to B, from point B to point C, from point C to point D. So let's take a look. I choose the second keyframe and let's take a look what are the difference between the other keyframes. So let's take a look at the keyframe assistant. We have Easy Ease. When I click on the Easy Ease, you will see that the icon turned into something like this. So at this point, what it means is, at this point, it will go until getting slower, until this point, it will stop for a while. Then from here, it will go slow until the constant speed. So let's take a look at the distance of the points. If you take a look at here, the points goes constant, then slowly get nearer to each other. And at this point, at this point, it go closer and start to get slightly further, meaning that it will go fast until slow, then slow and fast again. If let's say I want to go back to constant speed, I hold down my control, click onto the keyframe again, then it will go back to constant speed. Now let's take a look at the easy is in. So what happened is when I have it here, you will see that the keyframe go from fast to slow. And then here you have the constant speed back. So meaning that if you take a look here, when it goes in, meaning that it will get slower. And at this part, it is half of the diamond shaped keyframe. I hold down control, click one time, click one more time. Right now I need to click twice to go back to the constant speed keyframe. Right click, keyframe, easy is out. What it means is same. When I take a look at here, here is constant speed, whereby you see the distance are the same. When after this, it will go slower and slowly faster. you see from the distance of the points. So this is how it goes. So this is the difference between Easy is, easy is in, and easy is out. Let me get back to the constant speed. Now I click on, right click on it, and go toggle whole keyframe. Once I click on toggle whole keyframe, you'll see that all the dots are gone. So what it means is, before this, everything's are still constant speed when it moves. And after this part, you'll see that it stops and it will grow big and suddenly when it go to the next keyframe, it will jump. Hold down my control, click it back again to constant speed. You can see that it is changed back to the original constant speed. There is another keyframe which I need to select the all the keyframes. You will see that the distance between the dots over here, over this part, and this part are different. What if I want from point A to point D has the same constant speed? I have all the keyframe for the path selected, right click, and I go to roof across time. I click on it to activate the roof across time. And right now, this is what I see. 
all the dots has the same distance in between of them. And if you take a look at the center here, these two keyframes turn into dot, meaning that it automatically calculate the distance in between these two dots and it move it away from the original seconds that we have. Let me fit it. We play it again. So right now, they have the constant speed from start till the end. Now, if let's say I want it to be faster, I can just move this to the front so that it becomes faster. If I want it to be slower, I can move it all the way to the fifth second and I'll see it go very slow. So if let's say you want to turn back to the keyframes that you want, you can always select everything and right click and uncheck the roof across time and you will get something like this. And it will release back to the easy is keyframe and make sure the distance are still the same for the dots, meaning that the speed is still constant from point A to point B. This is the types of keyframe. We have toggle hole keyframe, we have roof across time keyframe, and we have keyframe assistant easy is, easy is in and easy is out. Next, we take a look at once we have this animated, if let's say we want to change the path, can we change it? Yes. You can just select the layer and go to the point where you have it and you have this handle, right? You can just pull the handle. If let's say like this, it's very hard to pull, right? You can always hold down your space bar when it turns into the hand icon you can go nearer and get the handle so what if you want to break the tangent you can always hold down alternate and click onto the handle and break the tangent and two handles will react independently you can always go to the pen tool and select convert vertex tool and at the handle here you can just drag it to break the tangent or if you want to return it back to the Bezier curve, you can always hover to the point and drag. And if I want to change it in the timeline here, I can always right click the timeline and go to keyframes interpolation. Once you click keyframe interpolation, there is this temporal interpolation where it, this is the time. And this is the spatial interpolation. And we are looking at the spatial interpolation whereby we can do something over here. Right now, it's a continuous Bezier. If let's say I go to linear and click OK, and this is it, you won't able to see the handle. So sometimes when you animate, you can't see the handle and you want to open it. There are two ways to do it. You can go to this Convert Vertex tool at the point here, you just hold down and click to get the handle or I just undo first or you can right click at the keyframe here, go to keyframe interpolation, spatial interpolation, change to continuous Bezier and click OK. You will get this. I go back to the selection tool, you will get this. So this is how you play around with the path. And there is a second thing that you can play around with. Right now, when I play, the box has same direction. What if I want to follow the path direction? How can I do that? I can always go to the layer, right click, go to transform, and go all over to the bottom auto orient. I click on the auto orient, orient along path, which means it rotates along path. I just click on it and click OK. Right now you have your shapes rotate follow the path. So this is how you play around with your animation. You can keyframe few attributes in the same time. When we are combining few attributes together, our animation will get more attractive.